Hello, everybody. Welcome to Ladies Power Lunch. Thank you so much for joining us. It's the holidays. Whether we like it or not, the time is progressing, perhaps a little bit faster than I might like myself. But hey, time waits on no one. It certainly is not waiting on me. I was just talking to one of my patients and we were laughing together about it because at my home, and this is 100% true, everyone, at my home right now, on my front doorstep, there is the pumpkins from Thanksgiving and from Halloween still sitting on my doorstep. And there is 100% a witch hanging on my door right now. There have been no Christmas decorations put up in my house. None of that has happened yet. And it is already the 3rd of December. And one of the things that I want y'all to appreciate is that there is no way that I'm beating myself up about this. This is just the way that it is. And we are progressing with our holiday plans. And eventually, if we're going to get decorations, it's going to happen. So I want you all to rest assured that whatever you're doing and wherever you are in your holiday season planning, all is well, everything is okay. But I just thought that today would be a good day for us to have some conversation about maintaining our brilliance even during this busy, hectic holiday time. So welcome to everybody who's joining us. Thank you so much for being a part of Ladies Power Launch and for being a part of our show today. I have here in the Zoom studio with me, Chris, and Chris is going to tell us just a little bit about who she is and what she does. Chris. Oh, thank you so much. So I'm pleased to be here today. Uh, my name is Chris Vasiliadis. I call myself a burnout buster. I basically, I have my own business. It's called Priority Wellness, and I specialize in helping overstressed and over busy individuals and teams who feel like the way that they're functioning is exhausting them and not sustainable. And I help them turn that around to create what I call systems of sanity so they can run their days without running themselves into the ground. So I'm very excited to discuss this topic today. Yep, this is, this is a topic that I think is throughout the year, not just now, super important for all of us. But I think that during the holiday times, there are added stressors that show up. I can, I feel like I can speak really, really eloquently to this topic because of my personal experience. And some of you might know that, you know, once upon a time, about 11 years ago, I experienced 100% burnout. And yes, guys, burnout is not just a thing that you read about or hear coaches talk about. It's a real live medical condition. I was doing all the things. And you can imagine doing all the things sometimes is not exactly the best way to go about it. I just had a baby. I just changed my practice. I went from working part time at two different practices to finally getting what I thought was my dream job here in the practice that I am at now. And so, you know, when you're new and you're the new kid on the block, you kind of have to prove yourself. So I was doing all the things that plus a brand new baby. And me feeling like, you know what, I'm not losing the baby weight fast enough. So why don't I do the lo next logical thing? Why don't I start also training for the Hartford Marathon? Sounds like a plan, right? Sounds like I was, I was just really, really on track for disaster. So, you know, these things can only happen in real life because we could never make up stories about this. I'm a physician who treats patients who have pain. And I swear to you, I was limping around in my office on crutches because I was in so much pain that I couldn't even walk on my feet. And one of my patients said to me one day, Doc, you should really go check yourself out <laughs> you're trying to treat me and my pain and I trust me if I wasn't on those crutches nobody would have known because 
during that period of my life, I was learning about this sense of doing everything myself and always showing up and always being there. That's what I was learning about and learning firsthand that, well, that's not the way to be. And so, of course, I had a beautiful, bright smile on my face. And I wouldn't say it's a fake smile because it was very genuine, genuinely directed at the people I was smiling at. But deep inside, I was in tremendous pain. And fortunately for me that day, I was able to get in very quickly to see a friend who's a physician. This was my seventh doctor's visit, by the way. So through all of this, I'd had two surgeries that did not do anything. I had already seen six other well, five other physicians, and then I saw two physicians on this particular day. For the first time in the history of the world, I closed my office. Some of you guys know this story because I tell it a lot. And the reason I tell it is because I feel like there are lessons here for all of us, even for myself to remind myself that just because my witch is still on my door is not a reason to panic, right? So I'm there and I, for the first time in history, close my office head over to the doctor and I'm sitting in her office and she looks at me and she says you know what you've done right and I knew I knew that I was in an extreme state of exhaustion and that I had completely overdone it I had exhausted my adrenal system and I was in the throes of an autoimmune episode. So now I have an autoimmune diagnosis. I created that all by myself, you know, just from having this toxic sense of having to do it all and having to do everything all by myself. So I share this story very, very often. Great news, guys. I'm fine now. I don't do stupid stuff like that anymore. <laughs> I have really, really learned from my mistakes and I have moved on to even teaching about using collaboration to not have to carry the load all by myself. I want to just say thank you to everybody over in our Facebook group who's sending me well wishes. Guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Wendy. I know a lot of people can identify with this. But Chris, I want to pull you into this discussion. If you yeah. were with me way back when, what would your advice have been to me to, you know, deal with the stress that having a new job and having a new baby and mm -hmm. not necessarily being able to do all the things in the way that I would have wanted to, what would your advice have been to me? So I would first of all, come with a sense of curiosity and just start by asking you some questions around so first of all, how are you feeling and kind of bringing your awareness to what's going on for you and whose expectations are you trying to meet with all these things that you're doing and, and how is all that working for you? And so, not at all. <laughs> yeah. So, cause I'm not big on like coming in and saying, well, you should do this. You should do this mm -hmm. before understanding kind of where you're at. Mm -hmm. what's going on. And I think the question about whose expectations are you trying to meet is yeah. an outstanding question because we all have these voices in our heads that kind of tell us things and very often try to diminish the things that we're actually achieving. And sometimes if we really tune into whose voice that is, we realize that it's not ours. It's right. something that we've brought along with us, along our journey, along our trail. For me, Wendy on our Facebook group says that question hits what's going on at the core. And I absolutely agree. See, for me, growing up in an immigrant family, you know, we learn 
you work hard, you pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you do what you have to do. My family is Jamaican. There is a joke in the Jamaican community about the person who only has two jobs and how lazy that person is, right? <laughs> so you, you can understand the background that I'm coming from. So no, I didn't have two jobs anymore. I only had the one plus my responsibilities at home. And there were all these voices playing in my head. And these were the questions that we really, really have to ask ourselves. For me, one of the things that I know as a burnout buster, I just love, love, love that term, is to really appreciate that we're all operating at different levels of energy. And so it's never a one size fits all equation. And so I think we in our society, we are, we're sort of driven to be a part of this just do it culture. And I mean, this is this is the way that it's been for a while. And this is what we've grown up with. And this is what we have learned. And this is probably one of the voices that is playing in our heads. And it's on our shirts and it's on our sneakers, right? We just do it. We just get going. But what I do know is that with treating patients and with energy management, it's really, really not one size fits all. And for no. me... I am not going to ever have the level of energy, perhaps, say, that you have. What are your thoughts on that? So many thoughts on that. There's a lot to unpack there. Yes. But, um, on the topic of managing your energy, it helps to have some awareness of what gives you energy and what drains your energy. And that's going to be different for everybody. So a way you can start to ask yourself that question is, how, do I, how am I best fueled? to do what's important to me. So, and it's not like, so you can be the energizer bunny all the time and worrying like a top. It's how can I, what do I need to operate at a pace that is sane for me? And rather than no matter how chaotic things might be externally, I'm going to decide this is the pace I'm going to work at and what, what helps me function that way. So that could be any app. It could be, it could be taking a breather and taking a few deep breaths, walking outside. It could be sitting down and having a meal away from your computer. Uh, it could be talking to a good friend. It could be putting on a piece of music that you like, whether it's classical instrumental soothing music or if it's 80s dance music that you like to dance to. And I have a patient who absolutely adores heavy metal music and that would make my ears bleed, but it right. calms him so tremendously. So it really is not one size fits all. Yeah, it's tuning into what you need and it's realizing that you mentioned, you know, we have this kind of just do it mentality. Well, yes, that's what we see very prevalently in our culture, uh, but we don't have to play along that way. We can decide, you know what, I'm going to give myself breathing room periodically so I can reset and decide what works best for me. I, I'm going to decide to give myself white space during the day and not jam things in back to back to back to back because I know I need breathing room. We all really need breathing room to function. We're not robots. I, I often say we're human beings, not human doings. So we need to give ourselves periodic space to be. I can absolutely. go on. Oh yes, I, I absolutely agree with you. And you know, I wanna share my screen here. It's very infrequent that I ever do any kind of slide presentation things when we do these. But I think if, if I can figure out how to share my screen here, I think I will because we are all built differently. I like to use the analogy and it doesn't fit exactly, but the analogy of the bee colony. And if you were to take the queen bee and put her in the builder bee function, that would be function. She wouldn't be able to, well, he wouldn't be able to work well either. I mean, there is no way he could perform that function. It's just 
pretty impossible. And so um, if, if I ever get a chance to share my screen, I'll share that what I have discovered is that there are really three pace types, three energy pace types. I give them fun little names and it's, um, okay, there we go. The energy pace type that is the, that I liken to the queen bee, she's the kind of person who she can really get a lot done, but she also needs a significant amount of rest and personal time and personal space in order to be able to perform. The type of person who can get by on really short periods of rest, shorter periods of rest. Yeah, that didn't work. I won't be able to share my screen, but it's fine. Um, shorter periods of rest and they're even, it's even perhaps difficult for them to get good rest if they don't expend all their energy. My husband falls in that category. Like he is the kind of person who, if he hasn't done enough throughout the day, he needs to go get a workout in before he goes to bed or else we're gonna all be up all night. Uh, and then there is the kind of person who's sort of in between that in between that higher energy and lower energy level where they're fast movers, they're fast paced. Most of us can't keep up with them, but they have to, they have, to have routine because if they don't have routine built in for their self-care, they are going to 100% burn, crash and burn out. So there's a little quiz and I'll drop the link in the chat at some point when I get a chance. Um, or if you're watching along in the podcast, listening along in the podcast, then I'll drop it in the show notes. But it's just a little quiz to give us an opportunity to check in on what our power pace is, what our energy pace is, how, what kind of energy do we have and how are we using it? to the best of our ability. And I think when we lean away from the idea that we should all be exactly the same and we embrace the way we are, the way we're built and understand that we're built that way so that we can serve in the best way possible, then we'll all be able to handle things like holidays in a more relaxed and brilliant way. Any thoughts on that, Chris? Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. It's akin to being aware of your natural highs and lows during the day. There's people who are morning people, there's people who are night owls. And, and no matter which of those three types of energies that you just described you might be, you're not gonna be that consistent level all throughout the day. You're going to have your natural highs and lows. So don't fight with them, work with those. Exactly. If you have thoughtful, cerebral work that needs to be done, do that when you are most on. If you have more administrative type things to do, whether it's bookkeeping or reading or responding to email, do that at a more lower point of the day. So, you know, we, we need to embrace and work with our natural rhythms as well. I, I love that. And I, I like the idea of really dividing your tasks like you're saying, so that you're doing certain things that require more of you when you have the highest levels of energy. I also like to invite us to really be able to imagine what it looks like when we are working in the best possible way with our energy. I like to invite us to remember, especially at our busiest, bus I'm using busy in quotation marks, but at the times that seem to require more of us energetically, to remember that having a regular practice for managing our energy, even when there's nothing else going on is actually what helps us to be able to manage our energy when our energy is challenged. I like to 
remind us that taking care of ourselves is, there is no substitute for that. So I'm going to put on my physician hat here and just mention that don't forget to eat and don't forget to stay hydrated. Look at you. Oh my goodness. Couldn't have planned that better. Nope, nope. Don't forget to get your rest. You know, this is not the time to binge watch all the Christmas movies because you're going to need your energy for other things. I may be talking to myself about that because I love Christmas movies. And another thing that we can pay attention to during the holidays is making sure that we're keeping our energy field a little bit clear. And so there are people in our lives who can really drain our energy. They might be people in our family. They might be people who are our friends. It might even be people in our work environment. And I was listening into a podcast this morning and the very, very wise podcaster mentioned that, you know what, sometimes if there's a family event that's going to be draining, maybe planning to stay one or two hours instead of five hours might be the way to go. But you know about the people in your life and you know who the drains are. And if you can limit your contact with those people, it can really be a big change for you as far as your holiday energy goes and maintaining your brilliance even, th even through this time. Any thoughts about the holidays and the people? Yeah, I, a, a couple of things. I want to go back to what you said about the decorations at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And almost, I was almost getting the sense that you were kind of feeling bad that, that you're, you, you have the pumpkins up and the witches up still. You got to let that go. Um, I have let that go. <laughs> yeah. And I'm saying that more, I know you have, but for anyone who's listening, I had a friend of mine basically announce on Facebook two days ago that she was getting off Facebook for the duration of the year because she was feeling bad seeing that everyone was putting up their Christmas trees and she hadn't gotten around to it yet. And so we get into this comparison game sometimes. And this was like two day, two, three days after Thanksgiving. And I was whoa, we need to like be okay with just chilling between a couple of holidays and gearing up for the next one and not feeling bad about not whatever, not feeling like you're not keeping up with the Joneses on whatever they're doing. So, so that would be one thing is decide on what, whatever you celebrate, what type of rituals, how do you want it to have it work for you? Like, do you want to send out cards? I was at a family member's house earlier this week and they were feeling bad that they already got a card from someone and they're like, oh, I guess I need to do them this year. And I said, well, does that make you happy to, to give them out or are you okay with just receiving? You know, you don't have to do it just because someone does it for you. So really, I think I use those couple of examples to say for the folks who are watching and listening, decide what do you want your holidays to be like this year? How do, who do you want to be with? How do you want to celebrate? What does, how do you want to acknowledge the holiday and create your own ritual? Whatever that looks like. If you, do you want to keep a certain ritual? Does that bring you joy or does it feel like a chore? And maybe, maybe you let it go or maybe you don't do it as a bigger scale. And while you might get invited to a bunch of different parties or celebrations, Maybe not go to them all. Maybe choose which ones you go to, or like you said, maybe you go to one, you know, a brief amount of time and decide what's what's the experience you want to have. How do you want to show up at any of these events? And what's going to help you do that? What's what's the energy? What's the fuel that's going to help you do that? So again, I love that. About this forever, but those are just a oh, few sure. Yeah, those are minutes. wonderful reminders for all of us. I think the key here is to for us to remember that we get to choose. We and go, this goes back to just being able to picture it, being able to imagine what it would look like if you were living your optimal life. If you if your holiday season looked the way that you want it to look, the way that brings you joy. You can marry condo this. You can put your hands on the cards and say 
they do not bring me joy. I don't want to send them out this year. You get to choose. You can look at your schedule and you can say, I like this event very much. I want to make sure that this is one that I attend because for whatever reason, I find it enriching. I know I have one such event for the holidays that I like to go to it because my kids get a chance to see their friends and to engage with them and making holiday ornaments and doing all sorts of holiday traditional things. I don't want to miss that. That brings me tremendous joy. And then I have other events that not so much. And so I get to choose. You get to choose whether or not, you know what, I want to do decorations or I don't. And that's what I was saying to my patient this morning. I have no decorations up as yet. And that is great. And also, I'm not sure if I'm even going to go this all out with the de decorations this year at all. And, you know, I was saying this to her because she has back pain and it's a problem for her to put up her decorations. She has that limitation and being able to say, you know what? I'm not going to do that, or I'm going to enlist help, or I'm going to scale back is okay. It's yeah. all okay. You get to choose, you get to paint your own picture of your life. Can you believe, Chris, that the time has already flown by? We I, could I really can. talk about this all day. Before we go, though, do you have any, um, any upcoming events or anything that you would like for people to know about you and your company so they can connect with you? Sure. And, and thank you for asking. I'm actually doing a, a talk on how to burn out proof your life. It's uh, being hosted by an organization called Women Entrepreneurs Network. Uh, it's the first week in June off the top, excuse me, first week in January off the top of my head. I think it's the third but I can post that in the uh, comments if you like. Yes, that would be wonderful. Thank you so much, Chris, for hopping onto the Zoom today. Perfect conversation. I feel like we really, really hit the nail on the head. And my final word on this is, guys, you know, I am the queen of collaboration. I am all about us not taking on all that burden all by ourselves. And if there is anything that is causing you stress, that is causing your brilliance to be dulled during this holiday season, I invite you to think collaboration, ask, make sure you're in alignment, make sure you're all in and the people who are around you, they're all in to make sure that everybody who is involved in all your holiday projects, that they are assigned to do the things that they're brilliant at and nobody's struggling to do things that they don't even want to do and take advantage of all the resources that are available to us so that we can perform at our best without having to work harder but that we can grow smarter thanks everybody for joining us and i'll see you guys on the next show bye everyone